We'll see if that works. If it doesn't, whatever. Okay. So when you're writing your introduction, and this is something that I'm probably going to notice in your essay threes, you need to start out broad. Do not start your introduction with the topic that you're talking about. Okay. So we're talking about essay four right now. Okay, remember, this is the stuff you're gonna have to regurgitate again on your final exam, so it doesn't hurt you to like get this information again. Okay, you're gonna start broad. You're gonna have five to seven or five to eight sentences, and then you're gonna move to the specific. Okay, the specific is represented as your thesis statement. Thesis. Okay, and it's got three parts to it. It's got the counterclaim, right? Someone wrote agree here on their midterm. This says argue. It very clearly says argue. You're not agreeing, you're arguing something. I argue that, okay, for this essay especially, you're arguing something, okay? You're trying to make a point. Um, cause of blank, blank, and blank. Okay, these are subclaims, subclaim one, subclaim two, subclaim three, okay? This is all really important because if you mess this up, you're gonna mess up your paragraphs and your ideas in your essay, right? The other reason this is important is because each, each of these is represented by a source of research. Worst handwriting ever. Okay, each of these is represented by a source of research. So when I made that note on the very last note that I wrote earlier, okay, for example, right, Ryan might do the counterclaim, Patrick might do subclaim one, Samira, Samira might do subclaim two, and Cynthia might do subclaim three. Does that make sense? Okay, so I want you guys, particularly that group leader or whoever, right, as a group, decide who's doing what. Okay, so that when you leave here, if you say, although, this is just an example, although cats are self-sufficient and easy to take care of, comma, I argue that dogs are the best pets. Okay, what's my argument? That dogs are the best pets, right? Because they, notice I'm changing the words to make this make sense, right? Because they um, are, this is probably not true, I'm just going to pull things out, but they are cleaner than other animals. They uh, make great companions and can be trained as service animals, right? Okay, so maybe one person in your group's gonna do research to find something that proves that dogs are great, com or that our dogs are cleaner than other pets, right? They're gonna find research that proves that then somebody in your group's gonna find research that proves that dogs are great companions, right? Someone that did a study on companionship in pets or something. And then someone that's written about dogs as therapy animals and how easy they are to train and the percentage of people that have a therapy animal that have a dog specifically, okay? Does that make sense, right? And then someone's gonna research how cats are really easy pets to take care of and some kind of research that's been published about that, right? So that's like kind of a silly example, but that's what you guys are doing in this group is you're gonna write your thesis statement out as a group, you're gonna come up with something, okay? And then each person's gonna have a piece that they're gonna research. Does it make more sense so now? we all have one thesis statement where we all split it up and we all do one part of the thesis statement and that's what we do our research on. Exactly. That's what our essay's over. That's, well, that's what this piece, the annotated bibliography is. Your essay is gonna be your own version of this. So okay. if you still wanna write about those same ideas, you're gonna rephrase it however you wanna say it, and then you choose if you wanna use your group's we research. Choose the topic over what we wanna write about. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That. yeah, so it can, be, it can be over almost the exact same thing that you guys are doing for your annotated bibliography, um, or it could be something different, but you do have to have, at least for this essay, at least three sources of research from the databases. Okay, and that's where this pre-assignment is helpful because you're gonna already have those when you go into the essays, so you're not having to do extra shit. Okay, um, okay. so that's why this thesis statement is so, so, so important. Now, transitioning out of annotated bibliography and back to your essay, right? 
when you go to your essay, you might rewrite your thesis statement, but write about the same topic so you can use all the same research, okay? Maybe you might write them in a different order and you might rephrase them however you wanna say, okay? You're gonna go through and say, oh, I wanna write about subclaim for one first, obviously, right? So you're gonna have your claim data warrant. Okay, the only thing about this outline that I posted for you, right, I'm gonna label this paragraph one or subclaim one. The only thing about this is I didn't put the little steps in the warrant, I kinda just wrote you a little note there, okay? But you might write out the steps and answer those questions if you're struggling with this idea, okay? So, remember, right, this is your topic sentence and it should relate to subclaim one. So if you said for subclaim one, what did I say? Oh, that dogs are cleaner. You wanna have a, a sentence here that says something like, dogs make excellent pets because they are cleaner than other pets, right? Then you're gonna go into detail. They're cleaner than other pets because they pee and poop outside and not inside of your house in a cage or a box or whatever. Right? Then you're going to say, right? Oops, sorry. You could say something like, for example, according to dot dot dot, and then whoever, right? Here's my quote, right? Here's my in text citation. That's from Gallego 72. Okay, so that's telling me that I can go on your works cited page and find the last name of Gallego, who, what did that person publish, right? And then, excuse me, go to 70, page 72 and find this quote that you just gave me, okay? You have to have direct quotes in this essay. So when you're writing your essay, right, the good news is for the annotated bibliography, which I'm gonna show you in a second, you're gonna be pulling quotes out of this research. Like each person in the group's gonna pull quotes out, so you're gonna already have quotes by the time you get to the paper. Okay, that makes this really easy. So you're gonna have your quote, right? And then you're gonna explain. Now, are you gonna do step one? How is this Locos Pathos read those? No, because that's not what we're doing here, right? We're writing an argumentative essay, okay? So you're essentially gonna have two things here, right? The, the number two and three that we talked about on the midterm in the last essay, right? Interpret the data in your words and then explain and I said tie back but I don't know that that's like computing in some people's heads explain how the data proves your thesis or your I'm gonna rephrase that your argument right so explain to me what is this saying right because you read the articles so you should know a little bit more detail about what this is actually saying if it gives you just a small statistic right so you're going to explain that statistic what does it mean interpret it right and then tell me how does that statistic prove me that dogs are the best pets because they're cleaner right if it said that you know a hundred thousand homes were studied and 90% of the homes that had dogs versus the ones that had cats were found to have less bacteria in this study, whatever, I'm just making shit up, right? If it says that, then you should interpret that statistic, right? And then tell me, okay, how does that prove, right? In your head, obviously that proves what I'm saying, right? But I'm not inside of your head, so you have to really explain how. Okay, imagine that you're talking to my five-year-old who asks why and what and how, everything you say. What did she say yesterday? Mm -hmm. Oh, she said, we learned about black history at school. And I was like, oh, you did? And she said, yeah, Abraham Lincoln. And then she was like, what did he do? And then she just asked a question and a question and a question. And, a, and like, we just had to like explain with so much detail, right? So like, imagine yourself talking to a five-year-old here right? Trying to explain to this five-year-old that doesn't agree with you that dogs are the best pets or whatever, right? No, 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 no. Let me give you this quote that proves it. And let me explain why this, pro this quote proves that dogs are the best pets. Does that make sense, y'all? Okay. So that's like all paragraphs are in essays. I, I don't know that why no one tells us this when we're like in high school, but this is like significantly easier than 
everything else. Okay, so you're just going to do that for every body paragraph um, in your essay, right? And you may have three, you may have more than three. If you're not meeting the length requirement, what you could do is add in a counterclaim paragraph, okay? Have a counterclaim paragraph that talks about, like, yeah, cats are great pets. They're really easy. If you go on vacation, you don't have to get someone to watch your cat, right? You just give it extra food and water, and it takes care of itself, right? Whereas a dog, you can't really do that. You could if they're outside, I suppose, right? But if they're inside of the house, how do they get out? Who takes care of them? Who gives them food at the times they need to eat? What if they eat all their food in one day, right? And you're gone for three days. Does that make sense? So you could say, yeah, I agree that cats are easier to take care of. But overall, I think dogs are the best pets. And here's my three reasons why. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, and then when you get to the conclusion, and this is another place where people like just go wonky. Conclusion, specific. Okay, the very first thing you should do is review your thesis, right? Five to seven sentences, okay? And then broad, answer the question, so what? Okay, you guys should be able to do that really easily on this essay, because this is like deep shit for this essay. It's not like why dogs are the best pets, okay? Um, and it's not like, here's a Colgate toothpaste advertisement or something. Um, but yeah, and you want to imagine yourself talking to Bosco, right? So I was grading my 1302 papers this morning, and they, and one of them ended with like, this is why you should buy a Prius. Okay, and I wrote at the bottom of the paper, Bosco doesn't know what a Prius is, right? Does that make sense, guys? Like, you need to be like broad at the end of your paper. You need to tell me like why I should care about this topic, okay? So, that's the down and dirty quickest version of this that I could give you, but hopefully it's starting to sink in more than how overwhelmed you were the very first time that I gave this to you, because some of your faces were like, I have no idea what you're talking about at all. Okay, so, this is for your essay, right? The only thing you're doing with your group is this part, and then I'm about to show you the rest of what you're gonna do with your group, okay? So, I want you guys to pull up the essay assignment sheet, where is it? Right here. It's in, it's in Blackboard, so I want you to pull it up in Blackboard because you're not going to be able to read this entire thing. Okay? And you're going to, oh, shit. Where's the address? Um, it's in Blackboard in Unit 4. Okay, so you're going to pull up that assignment sheet and you're going to discuss with your group about what topic you guys would like to focus on. Now, try to be like, you know, agreeable with your group. Choose something that you all kind of are interested in, okay? If, um, if you can't do that, just pick something for now that includes maybe more than one topic that's like kind of broad. Like, you know, America has some things that could be solved like, you know, healthcare issues, stereotyping, and race issues, right? So do you guys see how that's like super broad and that, but that's gonna include like multiple people's more specific topics? You're just gonna have to go and write a more specific thesis statement um, after like when you go to write your paper and it'll be less specific for this. If you can find a topic that all of you wanna write about, I feel like that would be easier for everyone involved. Then you could use the same research, et cetera. So maybe look into that. Um, the two of you are going to have an easier time because there's only two of you, so you should be able to find a topic between the two of you that you want, and the other people in your group are going to have to write about whatever you choose. So you get to pick. Moose's face was like, oh, okay. Yeah, so discuss within your groups. Read the assignment sheet. I'm going to video all of this, and then I'm going to erase it, and then I'm going to start talking to you about the annotated bibliography, like how you do that assignment. Okay? Okay. I don't know if I captured any of that on video. That's okay. And I am going to post this for you guys so you can look at it. Hopefully my handwriting is easy to read. Ish. Okay, so pick your main topic here from those on the list. It can be a lot more specific or, or it can be more broad than one of these topics. Okay, obviously police is not a 
topic, really. You have to pick something about that you want to say about that, right? Um, and then three solutions, three causes, three effects, right? You could choose which one of those you want to put down here, right? That's kind of the easiest way to do this, okay? So before you start any real research, you need to get this part figured out. But I'm going to show you guys, once you get this figured out, what to do next, okay? So this assignment sheet is in unit four, okay? That's for the essay. This is the annotated bibliography assignment sheet. This is also in unit four, okay? So um, it says it should consist of two academic articles. You guys each just find one. Okay, every person in your group is going to find one academic article. And I'm going to draw up here kind of what it's going to look like on your paper, even though this assignment sheet has the assignment on it, the instructions, and it has an example for you that you can scroll down and see. Okay, so you need a title and a thesis statement for your document. Okay, you need MLA formatting. But then each of you individually, okay, and this is why we're doing this on a Google Doc, okay? Each of you individually is going to find one source with the citation, and you're gonna write an annotation, which is just like a paragraph of notes about the source, okay? I have a guide of how to do that. It's A, B, C, and D. That's all you have to do, okay? Don't write any other sentences. Don't think you're doing claim that a warrant. This doesn't take actually that much thinking to do. It's very much a summary, okay? So individually, you're gonna grab your citation and then you're gonna have your annotation. This is A, here's B, here's C and D, right? Okay, let me circle these just so you can kind of get an idea, right? You make this person answered A, B, C, D, O, and they have their citation, they did a good job. Okay, this is called the annotation. Okay, and each of you is doing this one time, all on one document, okay? So if you guys have four people in your group, how many of these, this is one item, right, should you have? Four, right, one for each person, okay? So this is what you're doing individually, but it's all going on the same document because every single one of you is turning in the exact same document with everyone's work on it. It's a group project, right? So, and I'm using this example because I know Patrick doesn't suck. If Patrick sucked and he didn't get his work done, right? You guys are all turning in whatever he puts on that paper, okay? So that's the whole purpose of a group project is in real life, when you do a group project with someone, right? It's not going to be called a group project. It'll probably be called something else, right? But in real life, when you do that, if someone in your group doesn't carry their weight and doesn't do what they're supposed to do, you either have to do it for them or you have to correct them because you can't turn it in because your name's on it too, right? Okay. And in the real world, if you're on a team of nurses or you're on a team of doctors, right? And one of the doctors doesn't do what they were supposed to do, like people die and stuff. Okay, does that make sense? Now, not every situation is going to be that extreme, but um, if you, I bet all of you could think of an example within the job field that you're going into to where something important would happen if someone in the group didn't do their job and you didn't like fix it. Okay, so that's what each of you are doing. The citation is going to come from the databases where you get the article from. You don't have to make it. You don't have to easy bib it. You don't have to anything. It literally is copy and pasted. It's going to be really easy to get. Okay. The annotation, you're gonna read the article and then you're gonna just answer A, B, C, and D in like really direct sentences using first person. Sixto, when I say using first person, what does that mean? It means you say I, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, it's from your point of view. This is a research like thing. Imagine, imagine like when you're writing a lab report. I would assume that when you're writing a lab report, you're like, I found this to be true. My hypothesis was this, right? Okay, so let's go over this sheet so you guys can see that what A, B, C, and D are. Like that's literally all I'm looking for here. Okay, this is really, really easy to do like I'm saying. So A, what's the article about? Give the title, the author's name, and the article's main idea in one sentence or so, right? So, and this is my example that I always use. It has nothing to do with anything and I don't know anything about any of this information, okay? I'm just letting you guys know that. For example, this 
article um, was written by George Lucas, is titled, don't say entitled, is titled um, Star Wars versus Star Trek, which film is better? And the article's main idea discusses the idea, debates between the two films of Star Wars and Star Trek, the series is, series is, is that even a word? I don't know. Debates between the two film series and decides which series is the best. Ultimately, Lucas comes to the conclusion that Star Wars is the best film series, right? That's all A. I said, I said that way more complicated than it needs to be, but you can put it in just one sentence, okay? Name of the article, author's name, and the main idea, right? The other thing that I have to tell you is article titles are in quotation marks, always, not in italics, okay? So there's A, right? See that little line for A? Okay, I've done that. Now B, give a brief two to three sentence summary of the entire article. Make me think you read this article every single word. Did you hear what I said? Make me think. Don't let me think that you didn't read the whole thing, even if you didn't, right? Don't let me think that you didn't read it, okay? So two to three sentences. This is for your group members and for me, right? Because you're writing this document for me, but also for your group members who may or may not have time to go read the entire article, okay? So think and discuss the kinds of evidence the author uses to support his or her idea. So you might say, Lucas debates on these two um, film series. I can't say that word. It's not series. Series. Sir. Hmm? Series or series? Like, how do you say multiple? Oh, series. Sir. I know, right? That's a weird word. I've got to edit this out somehow. Um, okay, so he debates between the two films, right? by discussing and comparing the costumes, the set design, the script, and the actors in each film series, right? Did you guys see how I'm giving a summary and I'm telling you the parts of what he discusses? Ryan, are you looking that up for me? Huh, that's helpful. Okay, then, right, I'm gonna move to C. What's the proof? Okay, give at least one quote from the article this is important because you need a good quote. Don't pick a quote from the abstract, which is the freaking summary, because you can't cite that, number one. And number two, that's cheating. And it's probably not a good quote. Actually read for a good quote because you're screwing yourself over and your group mates because you're gonna get points off on this assignment if you do that and then on the next one if they use it or you use it, right? So it's double points off. Don't do that. Don't be lazy. Okay, so choose a good quote. Here, you might say something literally, literally means actually do this, okay, like this. You might say, I will use the following quote to support subclaim two of my thesis statement that dogs are the best pets because they, what did I say? They're good companions, right? And then put a colon, which means I just told you I'm going to give you something, here's the thing, right? Colon, here's the quote, right? Quote quotation marks, da, 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 da. there's the research that proves that dogs are good companions, end quote, and then you need your in-text citation there, which is the parentheses with the author's last name and the page number that you got it from. Page number doesn't mean the number of the PDF, right? So this is technically page one of this document, right? But if this document was taken out of a book that had other pages in it, it might say it's page 79, okay? You want to look for the actual page number on the PDF. Does that make sense? Okay, so and then, right, lastly, you're gonna reflect on the article and its credibility. Do not list every single answer to every single one of these little bullet point questions here, y'all. I hate that, it's like making me read more than I need to read and I really don't enjoy reading random sentences that much or anything for that matter, okay? So choose two, right? All I'm trying to teach you to do is assess the credibility. Is this is this document credible? Like, should this research be proven? Or is it Joe from down the street who decided to write an article about dogs being the best pets from his, based on his opinions? Does that make sense? Okay, so you might say, Lucas is credible because he has a degree in space films and um, is associated with the Star University, which put out Star Wars and Star Trek. I'm making stuff up. Patrick's laughing at me. Okay, but do you guys see what I'm saying? Like a lot of times it'll, it'll give you like a little bio of the author and it'll say like, oh, they have a PhD in 
neuroscience and they are at Harvard University, right? Okay, well obviously they're probably reputable because they work for a university, particularly one that's well known, and they're a neuroscience expert, right? They have a PhD in that topic, so they probably know about it, right? Um, think about ethos, right? How does the article give itself some ethos? Basically is what you're answering here. And I literally am okay with you saying this article is credible because, right? Think lab report, math, right? Be super, super direct. So the whole point of this assignment, guys, is for you to basically say, and you'll do this, like if you go on a four year or you go on even to advanced classes here or you go on to grad school, you're gonna be doing this in other cl all classes, okay? Not just English classes. The whole point of it is basically you're saying, hey, Professor G, here's my research. Here's some quotes I might use. Do you think this research is, is okay to use? Do you think my quotes are good? Do you think my idea for my paper is good? You do? Cool, I'm gonna move ahead with it now and write it, okay? Do we have time for that whole process here? Not exactly, okay? But sort of, I'm gonna try to give y'all some feedback before you have to like turn in your draft and stuff, obviously. So, but you're doing this as a group. So it makes it a little easier because you don't have to do this multiple times. You just do this one time and you find one article. Okay, so let me show you guys what this kind of looks like. If you scroll down in this annotated bibliography instructions and example assignment sheet, you'll see an example of what this can look like. I'm gonna zoom out. Oh, shoot. Oh, that's not what I'm trying to do. See, when I get used to my Mac, then I don't know how to use a regular PC. Um, okay, so notice they have their little header MLA. They have their title, The Simplicity of Punishment and Annotated Bibliography, okay? They have their thesis statement here at the top, okay? And then they don't have like group members' names labeling whose is what because I don't care whose is what. If there's a mistake in two people's stuff, if there's a mistake in everyone's paper because it's all the same to me, okay? So you don't have to label it. You can label it at first if you want, like, oh, this is my space to type, this is your space to type, this is so-and-so's space, right? Okay, but I don't need it labeled when you turn in because I, I just really don't care who did what. I don't. Um, okay, you are gonna put these in alphabetical order by the last name of the author in the citation. So here's my citation. I copied this right off of the databases, right? And this last name starts with a D, so hopefully this is in alphabetic order, yes. So it goes first, okay? Um, I edited this. I think there's still some mistakes in there, but I tried to make it to where it's the way that I wanted it. Um, okay, so there's their citation, and then there's their annotation. It looks like a paragraph, but you're not doing like claim data and warrant. You're just not. You're following these directions, A, B, C, and D. So it's just one paragraph with all the questions there. Mm -hmm. okay. That's it. Don't give me any other sentences. This is not fluffy. This, this is was, um, this is a part of the, the, the document we just came all together. We all have our mm -hmm. own page on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we all turned it together. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. This is not on a separate piece of paper for us. Nope. Okay. Yeah, you want to do this all in one document because then, like, for example, if Ryan's not doing anything, this is just an example because I know he always does what he's supposed to do. Next week, right? Ryan hasn't logged in. Ryan hasn't put anything on the document. Ryan hasn't typed. Well, Patrick's gonna be like, uh, dude, you need to do your work because one of us is gonna have to do, to do it for you if you don't do it, right? Like, uh, this isn't gonna work. Does that make sense? So that's why I'm doing this in a Google Doc so you can kind of see who's doing what. And that's also why, and sometimes students are like, well, I was doing it outside of this document. I was just gonna paste it in. Don't do that. Don't do that, okay? Because that's ugly, meaning mean to do to your group mates because they don't know that you're working on it. Okay, so this is what, yeah, this is what it's gonna look like. You can you can go through here and very easily see A, B, C, D. Like it's very easy. This article is about five pages in length, and the author is a current assistant professor of special education. Blah blah blah, which leads me to believe this is a credible source and could be used in my essay. Right? They rephrased it a little bit, but it's the same thing. Okay. Um, then there's the next one, right? There's your citation, there's their annotation, okay? A, B, C, D. Do you want to leave A, B, C, and D in there? I don't care. Pardon? Yeah, so this was one person's. Yeah, so this was one person's. Oh, okay. This was the next person's. And then we can pretend the rest was here, but I deleted them because they suck. Only half their group did a good job for this one, so I deleted them but you get the idea. I could just copy and paste these again in there and make it four, right, or five, or however many people are in your group. Does this make sense? Okay, yeah. so 
The next step is finishing out your thesis statement, right? Doing that preliminary research to figure out what you even want to say, and then doing the research. I'm gonna walk you guys through how to do the research. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna like hold my phone up to the computer. Is that weird? To record yes. it. Okay, well I'm doing it anyway. Um, all right, so you guys, I guess you don't even have to record this if you don't want to because I'm already doing it for you. Hashtag, you're welcome. It's my favorite thing to say. Okay, so you're going to go to, we're going to see if I can type with one hand and focus on this, northlakecollege.edu. Okay, you're going to click on services and resources. Okay, you're going to scroll down to library. Okay, and then, Lewis, what are we looking for right now for our research? Citations. Pardon? Citations. Well, what kind of, where's our citations going to be of a what? What are we looking for? Where should I click? Pardon? Yeah, yeah, right here, right? Articles, databases, yeah. The citation comes from the article, y'all. you got to find the article first. Okay, so then over here, this is something I want to note for you guys. Academic Search Complete is excellent. OmniFile is excellent. Gale is excellent. JSTOR, excellent. I cried when I first saw we had JSTOR here. It's expensive and we didn't have it. And I love it. It's really, really useful. JSTOR, it's a database name. It's like right here. Um, but do not use opposing viewpoints unless you're just not really sure what you want to say. Okay? Opposing viewpoints is low, low, low level. Some of the courses here and some of the people that work in places that should be helping you do research here may suggest that you should use opposing viewpoints. But it's because, right, I have higher expectations of you and I want you to be prepared to move on beyond this course and beyond this school, right, and do better that I'm going to tell you don't use it. Now, if you're not sure what you want to write about and you want to kind of just get some ideas, sure, go in there and search, um, you know, stereotyping issues in America or something, right? And then you can read some articles, but they're like two pages long, okay? So let me tell you this. When you go in here, this is not like Google, okay? When you go in here and search, if you put in racism, and you just type that, which is what students do because they think this is Google, you're gonna get 166,000 results. And no, it's not, doesn't know your search history and it's not gonna guess what you were trying to look for, right? It just puts on every single thing that it can find with racism in the title, right? Is that gonna be helpful? Not necessarily. The other thing that you need to know is that you're looking for an academic journal. See where it says academic journal? Okay, I'm gonna scroll. This is a periodical, okay? This might be long enough, but if I keep going, let's see, there we go. Periodical, three pages long, okay, is not credible for this assignment, okay? Your assignment should be at least, your uh, article that you find should be an academic journal and should be at least five pages long. At least means like preferably longer than five pages. Not five pages with three giant color photographs. Does this make sense? Are articles that long? Are They're going to be really, really long, actually. Like a good article, notice this one is 33 pages. Okay, the, in the never ending war on racial bias, that's good. Guys, 30 pages is the length requirement ish of a good article that's published. Okay, so it's going to be that or longer. Remember when I said you better make me think you read every single piece of this article? Mm. Are we hearing what I'm saying? Yes, okay, thanks. So, that's what you're gonna do. Now, if I say I wanna use this article, let's assess it. Can you guys see this, sort of? Yes. How many pages long is this? Uh, Six though, you best not be packing up your stuff. I hope you're sharpening your pencil. Okay, good. Um, 22 pages, right? Lewis, is this an academic journal? I know, it's hard to see. Yeah. Yeah, because it says academic journal. So maybe I want to write about this. I don't know. We're going to click on it.
Okay, this is the summary right here. Abstract y'all means summary. Don't take a quote from the summary. That's ridiculous. Read it though. Make sure you're not like reading this article, this whole article 30 pages and then you realize it wasn't about the thing you were looking for. Okay, if you scroll down, it says author affiliations. Wow, Department of Public Health, University of whatever that says, something in New Zealand, right? So they're associated with the Department of Health and a university. Wow, they're probably credible, okay? And then, oh no, oh, there we go. Then if I want to cite it, I'm gonna click right here where it says cite, and I'm gonna go and snag the MLA right here, citation, there it is. Perfectly cited for you, no easy bib. Okay, and then I'm like, well, maybe I need to look at the article. I want to read it. So I'm going to go click PDF full text over here. It's going to load. Okay, you can save it to your Google Drive on this side on the right right here. Or once this loads all the way, there will be like a little down arrow right here where I can download the document right there. Okay, what I would suggest doing is I always, when I'm doing research, say you don't maybe trust everyone in your group or you're not sure if you want to write about this for your actual essay. All the articles you find that might relate, download them, put them in a folder on your computer or in your Google Drive, right? Grab all the citations, delete them later if you don't need them. But it takes you five seconds to do this versus hours going back later having to find more research, okay? So, notice this has the title, the author, the notes about the authors, the little summary, and it talks to you with, um, Little subtitles, the subtitles are gonna help you navigate what's going on in the article, okay? The other thing you can do to assess if an article is credible is maybe they have a list of sources this long. It's probably credible. Okay, that means they did research and they're not just making up the numbers. All right, notice there it says references because this is not an MLA formatting. So don't think that that's what yours should look like ever, okay? Um, so yeah, so say I want to use this article, I'm going to copy that citation into my document. We're going to pretend that this is my document, right? I'm going to scroll down to a new spot, copy that citation right here, and then I'm going to start A, B, C, and D after I've read, read the article, okay?